So there are many options for portable power stations or portable power sources on the market right now, but there's none of them that quite beat everyone else for its value than this. And today on this episode, I'm gonna show you what this does, what it's capable of, and how you can build it in less than 15 minutes, all right? For all under $2,000. So if you wanna find out, stay tuned. All right, so before we get into this, let's go ahead and uh, put up a disclaimer. Uh, we purchased all this stuff with our own monies. None of this stuff was given to us. None of this stuff was sponsored. It all cost roughly around $2,000 and nobody's paying for this video, okay? So with that being said, let's get into it, all right? First of all, there's really only three components to this system, okay? There's this hybrid all-in-one inverter. There's a battery that's in the box and there's the box, right? That's pretty much it. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the components. So this right here is an EG4 3000 watt, a hybrid all-in-one inverter. This right here is a second generation of this unit and currently at the making of this video, there's only two generations, so this is the latest generation, but it's 3000 watts continuous and 6000 watts surge. A lot of people are gonna say uh, you can't, uh, 6,000 watt surge is not a lot, uh, and 3,000 watts continuous is not a lot. Eh, it kind of is, depending on what you're using it for. For the purpose of this, if you're using it as a portable power source, it kind of is mainly because of the capacity of the battery. Uh, but for whatever reason, you this well enough power, you can just get more and you can just parallel them here, or you can connect them in split phase and just put 240 out. So if you got two of these and just rolled them up and connect them in split phase and did all that kind of fun stuff, you'd have portable 240, okay? But I don't have no need for that, so we didn't do it, okay? So that being said, let's talk about uh, the connections that need to be made, and you can make these connections in less than five minutes, okay? So first of all, these two cables that are coming out or into this inverter, uh, it's a positive and negative. These two cables come with the inverter when you purchase it. They're already crimped um, and they have ferrules on them, so it's literally Stick it in, screw it in, you're good to go, okay? These two right here are for your solar input, uh, positive and negative. I used to have MC4 pigtails connected here, but I found myself not using them as much. They just kind of kept dangling around, so I just removed them. But if for whatever reason I need to put this outside and use it, I can just connect the thing here, and in under 30 seconds, I could have MC4 connected to this. Solar power in, no problem. Uh, these two right here are for your AC output. So uh, AC output, the uh, black is obviously hot, this white is neutral, uh, there's ground here. There, this red cable coming out of here is just to connect the grounds to the case, mainly because on the manual it says connect the ground of the AC output to this grounding screw right here. I'm not sure why they couldn't put it in here, but for whatever reason, that's what it says, so that's what's happening. Uh, these three right here are for your AC input, and if you don't plan on charging this from the wall, then you don't need to worry about this. But pretty much it's a uh, ground uh, neutral here and then hot here, and it's connected pretty much to an outlet that's down here that you can just plug an extension cord into. So if you don't need that, then you don't need to connect this, but if you wanna just connect an extension cord, just connect that, okay? So. And with that being said, since we're talking about the connections here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you're gonna build this or work on this at any time, you wanna make sure it's off because these are not isolated. So if one thing is on or is power into one source, you're probably going to shock yourself or it's a big hazard. So make sure every single source is off. Solar uh, input, input, AC input, obviously the inverter needs to be off, all that kind of stuff. So with that being said, that's what's going in on here. This is the case. You can put it back on here um, and put it on here, but I'm not gonna do that mainly because I'll probably show you a little bit more stuff, okay? So uh, this uh, inverter is attached to this um, uh, box by three screws. Um, I put pretty much used uh, riv nuts and riv nutted um, the box here. Uh, one screw right here and two on the top, pretty much the same way using a washer. And then I also used hot glue to hold it down for a little bit um, as I let sell the bottom of this inverter to this case. Okay, so uh, this inverter isn't going anywhere. Uh, main reason for the extra glue is mainly because uh, we're talking about riv nuts in plastic and that's not gonna hold up that well even if it's glass reinforced toolbox plastic, it's just not super strong. So with the combination of the riv nuts and the uh, Lexel adhesive, this ain't going anywhere, okay? Uh, with that being said, you just go ahead and drill three holes here to pass the cables in and then we'll go ahead and show you what's actually going in on here. So in order to open it up, open it up, 
open it up and you can actually just lift this, right? So if you look here, um, we'll talk about the, the cables since we did talk about that earlier. So the cables, I actually just started using a lot of the holes that are already in the box. Um, so this hole right here, so this hole right here, I could put pass a cable through there. And this right here is where the cable is passing in through. Uh, the only one I didn't use a hole for that is this um, AC power input cable, mainly because I wanted to use a, um, or, or this right here, which is the uh, battery input cable to the inverter. Um, I didn't do that mainly because these, there's just not enough big holes right where I wanted them to on this side of the box to do that. So I just drilled an extra hole here and just put one of those rubber uh, waterproof grommets here to hold that in and it seems to work fine. But um, if you didn't need anything that big, then you don't have to do that. Obviously you can see the rib nuts in there. I've glued them down, also reinforced them with that. If I could redo it again, I would literally just put a washer there and help glue that down because that will just reinforce it a little bit more, okay? So as we're looking at this, let's look at the layout, okay? So obviously uh, there's a battery right here. We'll talk about that in a second, but the battery fits in here almost perfectly. Uh, the battery fits in here and it stretches the box out a little bit, but it's nowhere nearly as bad so that it's unusable. It works actually just perfectly fine. And because it's so tight in here, it doesn't actually go anywhere, okay? Um, and you don't have to worry about it sliding backwards, mainly because there's a wheel here and the wheel well inside the box prevents the battery from sliding backwards, okay? So um, the reason I say it fits in here perfectly is because it's snug and there's space on both sides so that you don't have to worry about any components or wires or anything like that being crushed. As you can see right here, right? As I close this, all of these wires that are passing through this lid just fit into this crevice here and there's no, uh, no, you know, no compression, no wires being tangled, nothing's being smashed, any of that. It fits in perfectly. So this red wire comes in here it goes along this side and connects to the breaker that's here. And I'll show you that in a second. And then the breaker connects to this battery, okay? So now that we kind of figured out the layout and the wiring, let's talk about this battery. So this battery is an EG4 um, 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery, I believe, or something like that. Uh, pretty much it's a five kilowatt hour battery. Uh, it's a completely sealed waterproof battery. And I think if you wanna buy it new or something like that, it's roughly around like 15, 1600 bucks. But if you buy it right now, or anytime I go look at it, it seems to be there's a refurbished unit for under $1,200. I think it's like 1136 or something like that. You could buy this waterproof 48 volt, five kilowatt hour battery um, for under $12,000 or $1,200, which is actually pretty good. And then, like I said, Everything you need to connect this stuff up, like this wiring, comes with this inverter with the crimps and the lugs and everything already on there, so you don't have to worry about anything. You just go here, connect the, uh, let's say, two cables there, uh, maybe one or two on the breaker, and then you're good to go. The breaker also comes with the inverter when you purchase it, okay? So, with that being said, let's go ahead and just put this down. See if I just put this down here. I can close this here. All right, so let's go take a look at the breaker. This right here is a Nader DC rated breaker. And this breaker, like I mentioned, comes with the uh, inverter when you purchase it. The inverter comes with cables, uh, a Wi-Fi adapter, dongle, uh, ethernet, RS cables, and all this kind of fun stuff, including this breaker. So all you really need to do is take a small little tool, like an oscillating tool, just cut out the front of this breaker, put the breaker in there, and then, you know, just glue it in there. Uh, this right here is really just, I think it's like hot glue. You could use epoxy glue if you wanted to, but it works pretty well. And this um, wire, the positive wire going through this breaker completely breaks the circuit between the inverter and the battery. So it just becomes completely safe, okay? And uh, being it's positioned and protected by this wheel well, there's no way that breaker is getting crushed or damaged by the battery, all right? So as we're on the side, this right here is just two power strips. You can just pick up at your local Home Depot, Walmart, whatever. Um, I just used two old ones that I had laying around. And the reason I use two of them is mainly because each power strip is roughly rated for 15 amps. So both of them combined going into the inverter, you can pull roughly about 30 amps at 120 watt or 20 uh, volts out of it. That way not overloading any power strip, okay? Um, and that's pretty much all you really need. You can build this thing in under 15 minutes. All right, and that's how you build this inverter. Like I said, you can build this thing in under 15 minutes and it works perfectly, okay? Uh, there's gonna be a bunch of clips at the end of it being used and powering a bunch of stuff, but uh, the easiest way to put it is this thing will power pretty much almost anything. And if for whatever reason you can't power whatever device it is, just buy a soft starter, like an inline soft starter thing, connect it here and you're good to go, okay? Uh, but for me, it's powered um, a 12 inch miter saw, 10 inch miter saw, compressor, heat gun, 
all kinds of stuff. So this thing will power pretty much anything and you'll be good to go for a long time, okay? And if for whatever reason, you're in a power outage uh, situation, just connect up the solar here, connect it here, and you're gonna go pretty much all day considering you have enough solar, okay? So let's go ahead and figure out how to turn it on. It's actually quite simple. Turn it on, you take this breaker, flip that there. You go ahead, come here, turn this uh, power switch on, all right? Inverter powers up, no problem, all right? So at this point, you can go ahead and plug stuff in here, turn it on and everything's good to go. Um, if it overloads, it'll say it's overloading. You can look at the screen here and tell you how much it's actually drawing out and kind of fun stuff. But this is probably the easiest, most convenient portable power solution for the money uh, currently on the market, okay? So the uh, question that's gonna come up is, well, I don't really wanna put that together. It looks janky, whatever. Okay, that's fine. But if you have the money to go buy a, let's just say a uh, EcoFlow Delta Pro, which is, can put out 3,600 watts continuous, but only has a 3,600 watt hour battery, then you can go ahead and buy that for more than the cost of this, which like I said, I think the retail of that is roughly around $3,600, but you could probably get it on sale, if I had to guess, somewhere around 3,000 or 28 or something like that, I don't remember. Um, maybe it's $2,600. The point is that that thing is pretty expensive. Um, even if it's $2,600, it's um, still pretty expensive. But this solution here, 15 minutes, uh, buy a few things from Signature Solar, Currently with the free shipping, uh, you don't even have to pay for shipping and you could put it together 15 minutes, $2,000 and you'll be good to go. And more capacity, uh, more input. Um, right now, this unit can take 5,000 watts of solar coming into the unit um, and it can also scale out, meaning if you need more, just put another one of these, connect them in parallel and you're good to go. So right now, I believe this is the best, easiest solution, bang for the buck, uh, especially its form factor. I definitely like this better than like a big cart, even a like work cart, right? Or even a moving hand truck, right? Those things, if you can try to fit in a car, could be a little bit difficult, but this, you can easily just put it in the back of any small compact car and you'll be good, okay? So, um, you know, there's other solutions out there that may be good, uh, some of them, maybe more expensive and if that fits your bill go do that if not feel free to build this okay so hope this video helped you guys out and we'll see you guys next time